The pandemic was a stress test for many of us, but here's one financial instrument that can help. OctaFX. OctaFX is a reliable global trading platform with over seven years of experience. It helps Forex traders make the most profitable and efficient trading decisions. Today, they have more than 3.5 million open trading accounts and 100 countries covered. If you're new to trading, OctaFX provides a free Forex basic course, free webinars, and also sends weekly and monthly reports so that you're always aware of market news. Download the OctaFX trading app from the description and get $5,000 in your demo account just for practice. You can practice until you feel ready to switch to a real account. Check the caption to find out more and use your promo code WUSI100 to double your first time deposits for more efficient trading. Hello, family, and welcome to another episode of the VT Podcast, where we talk about ideas that matter. I hope you've enjoyed your Easter break over the past couple of days. It has felt, hasn't it, rather necessary. I often like to call the Easter break our midterms, just like we used to when we were in school. It feels like that time when you can just take a deep breath, inhale, and then let it all out. To recon what has happened in your work life and your personal life over the first quarter of the year, to really think about whether or not the resolutions you've made around December of last year, as you were crossing into the new year, have been held and held strong by your actions, your thoughts, and your behaviors. I often say to my friends, if you think about it, that self-respect is aligned to self-discipline. If you really respect yourself, the first sign of showing that is keeping committed to the things you said you would do long beyond the feeling you had when you committed to doing them, respecting you. Today, I want to talk a bit about imagination, your imagination. And let me tell you the inspiration, where the inspiration from this comes from. My youngest son, Umnobi, four years old, has the most vivid imagination. It's actually inspirational to see. I've got a massive smile on my face right now just thinking about it. He wanders around the house playing and making a noise and making little shooting noises and driving noises and he picks up his toys. So the other day I picked up that not only does he do this, he's got an imaginary friend. His name is Lumo. This imaginary friend it appears, travels with him wherever my youngest son goes, and we could be in the middle of the mall or at the toy store, even at home, or just about to settle into bed at night. And he will immediately just like break into this plaything, and Lumo's right there. What was so inspirational for me to see was that whereas for me, it's imaginary, for him, it's real. He can actually see him. He plays with him. He interacts with him. They're having a two-way, and he, in his mind, having constructed this character, recognizes this character as a real, living, breathing thing. That character, Lumo, is real. Then I started thinking to myself, so at what point then did we all forget who Lumo was? I want you to remember and just cast your mind back to when you were a wee baby still. You probably had an imaginary friend or an imaginary character. I'm almost certain if you grew up like I did, I grew up we couldn't afford toy cars, so the little brick down the road was the toy car. I grew up shooting marbles down the little, you know, we used to put the bricks together and form a little two-finger hole and you'd shoot marbles into it, yeah? I grew up playing spin the top and you would round the, the string around the top and then you'd nail it onto the dust floor and it would spin and you'd try and pick it up with your fingers and have it spinning on your hand. That's how I grew up, and a big part of that was just the imagination in your brain. When it used to rain, the street I grew up on was quite downhill, right? And when it used to rain, we used to take little matchsticks and would run up the street and would put the matchsticks into the little water run from the top of the road to the bottom, and we would have a race to see whose matchstick would get to the bottom first. For us, it was just as vivid a race as watching the Formula One today, but it all happened in our brains. It was in our minds. It was just our imagination. So, when did we lose that? When were we told that what's real is real and what isn't isn't? When was the first time we were told to grow up, get real? 
come into the real world. When was that? It seems interesting, isn't it, that the world has deemed the imagination a childlike flaw, that for some other strange reason we're just not allowed the ability to daydream, to lose ourselves in the cognitive process of imagining a new, different world. This is happening at a time when, as I'm sure you would have noticed, we also have not only the pandemic of COVID today, but I think one of the most silent pandemics not spoken about, the pandemic of mental health, depression, and what's happening around the world. I know three people in my life who actually suffer clinical depression. If you saw them every day, you'd never say they are jovial, they're happy, and they are just like you and I, ordinary human beings living their lives. But they live daily with the threat of this other character in their brain that drives not only how they feel about themselves, but sometimes even more dangerously, potentially what they could do to themselves. Now, of course, because they're diagnosed, it means that they have a process of treatment and a program of education that you and I as human beings need to go through to learn about that world and how they're dealing with their challenge. But I wonder, when did we lose our ability to dream, our ability to imagine? Now, this wouldn't be a VT podcast if I didn't do some background research and find out what imagination actually is. So, I looked it up, and here is what the literature says. Imagination is a cognitive process used in mental functioning and sometimes used in conjunction with psychological imagery. It is considered as such because it involves thinking about possibilities. Park, thinking about possibilities. Thinking infers a logical process, right? Because you're engaging the part of your brain that often assimilates logical information, brings together data to arrive at a logical conclusion. But you're doing this about possibilities, which means it's the connection point between that which is real, logical, structured data, and that which is imagined. Unreal, as the world would say. Possibilities. Of the very fact that we're saying possibilities means it doesn't exist yet, although it does in our minds. And so the point here then is that imagination is not the enemy of reality. Imagination is an extension of reality. When my son is playing, he's not imagining the surface on which he's playing. He's extending to that surface and an additional element. He's imagining something else, an additional toy, an additional friend, a separate conversation, say. It's a strength. It's not a weakness. The Ability to Imagination. We'd like to take a short break to tell you a bit more about OctaFX, a reliable global trading platform with over seven years' experience. OctaFX has two applications that allow you to increase your income anywhere with just a computer or phone. One, OctaFX Trading App is an official Forex trading tool allowing for both depositing and withdrawing funds to control all your trades. And two, OctaFX Copy Trading. For those who don't have enough time to learn, but are willing to increase their income by trusting the professionals, here you can simply start following experienced traders and copy their trades. Also check out their new key feature, the risk score, which shows the level of risk the investor is taking to help decrease the chance of losing the investment. Cool, right? Check the caption to learn more. Also, in the description, you'll find bonuses for each application. It also says in the literature... Imagination can also be expressed through stories, such as fairy tales or fantasies. So I thought a bit about that word, fantasy, fantastical, fantastic. And it really got me thinking. Remember when you were younger, you had fantasies about what your life would turn out like. We had fantasies about what your wedding day would be like. You probably, if you were like me, hopeless romantic, wanted the happily ever after. Remember when you were a little one? You often had an idea of what your career would look like, what the rest of your professional life would look like, what your contribution to society would be. You had an idea, and it was all fantasy. Children often use such narratives and pretend play in order to examine their imaginations, or even, and this is the important part, to exercise them. So, when I read it up on Wikipedia, it spoke about something called the mind's eye. 
The notion of a mind's eye goes back at least to Chiquero's reference, Mentis Oculi, during his discussion of the orator's appropriate use of simile. So the point about it here, then, is that imagination is your mind's eye, or as they call it in spiritual terms, your third eye, the things that are not yet physically manifest, but mentally real. So, let's pause here for a moment, and let's just think about what it is that I've shared. First, that imagination is not a learnt behaviour, it's an inherent human trait. There is some argument, by the way, amongst those particularly who work with anthropology, that in essence what separates human beings from animals is not necessarily management or structure, although those things are important. It's not even hierarchy, because even in the animal kingdom, there is a hierarchy. There are those who eat those who are eaten. What really separates human beings from animals is our imagination. It's our ability to see things as they are not yet, and then make manifest in the real world that which we first imagined in our minds. So during this pause session, I want you just to first understand the following. You don't learn to imagine. You're a human being. You inherently know how to imagine. Allow yourself the space, time to exercise that. Second, imagination is an extension of you. It's not separate from you. So what that means is that what you imagine is an extension of what you allow yourself to imagine. For most of us, we've lost that naivety, that curiosity that's necessary when we imagine things. We've convinced ourselves that that which is not logical, science-based, data-driven, is a weakness rather than an inherent human trait. It's an inherent human threat. Recognize the following. The device that you're listening to this podcast on, the car you drive every day, the chair you sit on, the computer you use, even the language we speak is an invention. It wasn't here at the beginning of time. Human beings invented it to make being on earth an easier more human experience. So we imagined these things first, and then having imagined them, made them manifest. So imagination is a strength, and allow yourself the time, space, and opportunity to just escape your reality and to imagine things differently. And third, so this was a question I asked myself when I was preparing for this, and it hit me, for a full day that I really had to take a moment to repause. Now I'd like to ask you the question. I want you to resist the temptation to think about this question at a surface level first. I want you to resist the temptation to assume that the answers you already have are the correct answers. I want you to really think deeply about this question. And the question is this. Who did you want to be before you were told who you should become? In other words, who did you want to be before you became what you've become? Much of who we are, what we are, is learnt, it's socialised, it's us fitting in to this little place called Earth, into our little communities called society. Sometimes, if not always, it's a massive deviation from where we started. So... This week, allow yourself the time and space to imagine. Recognize that imagination is not a weakness, it's a strength. And most importantly, where you see imagination, with your friends, your family members, your team, or even your children, don't stop and scoff at them. Encourage it. Participate. Play along. Because maybe, and just maybe, Reality is merely an illusion, albeit a very persistent one. So that, friends, is the VT Podcast this week. I wish you an amazing week ahead. God bless you. Sayonara. 
We hope that you've drawn valuable lessons from this week's podcast. To partner with us, visit mygrowthfund.co.za or email info at mygrowthfund.co.za.